Okay, we are live. Hello, Facebook. All right, and the audio is recording. All right, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Abundant Accountant Podcast. It is so great to see everybody, and I hope you are having a beautiful day. Today, we are here with a very, very special guest. Our special guest is the founder of Certified Tax Planners. Her name is Dominique Molina, and for all of you listening, you might have heard of her from before at one part in your career. So, Dominique, welcome to the show, and uh, it's an honor to have you here. Thanks so much for having me here today, Michelle. Yes, of course. Anytime, anytime. And Dominique, can you just share with everyone a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and your background? Sure. My background. Ooh, that's exciting. Um, (laughs) This is the only place that people get excited about what I do, you know? (laughs) So I'm a CPA, and like a lot of you out there, I started my career um, in public accounting, working for a large practice here in San Diego, California. That's where I live. And um, like a lot of people, kind of grew frustrated with some of the constraints of public accounting, long hours, mediocre pay, uh, and no life, really. And so I thought the cure to all of those problems was just to start my own practice and didn't take long before I realized I had the same exact problems, only they were magnified because now I have to take care of other people that are working for me, too. So um, so I really set out to do a, do my business a different way. And what I've found over the years is that focusing on tax reduction has been a great way for me to adopt value pricing, really shrink the number of clients that I work with. I work with just 26 clients now, but most people would be surprised to learn how much I make uh, because it's very lucrative. And uh, and now I spend most of my time actually working for a nonprofit. It's a small organization here in San Diego. It's called the American Institute of Certified Tax Planners. And I help CPAs, enrolled agents, and attorneys do the same thing in their practice. You know, um, get licensed in tax planning, learn how to deliver real value to people, get paid a lot more than industry standard, so-called, and uh, lead a much better life. So uh, I'm really happy to be here today, and I'm excited about our topic, too. Yes, we are discussing a very, very important topic today. Well, I would say every topic on the Abundant Accountant podcast is very important, but this way, this one is for sure. And it's, you know, what are, what are some of the best ways to get and attract higher net worth clients for, you know, an accounting firm? And I think you've done a really great job at that. And a a lot of accountants that I've worked with, right, in my courses or whatever they, whenever they're saying, Michelle, you know, how do I get those higher net worth clients into my portfolio? I'm sick of dealing with the low price clients that, you know, come to me and they only want to know what I charge. And then they always tell me I'm too expensive. And, you know, I get it because, you know, you and I have dealt with the same thing. But really, what are those things that we need to do as accounting professionals to increase the value of high net worth clients in our firms? And in today's show, that's what really we're going to be talking about. The top three reasons you might not be attracting those people And what do you need to do to attract them? So I'm very excited for this topic. Yeah, I am too. So we're going to talk about the top three things that you might be doing that actually repels uh, affluent uh, business owners from wanting to work with you. And then we're going to talk about the top four things you can do to actually attract them into your business. All right. Let's get into it. What's the first one that's repelling people away from you know, from everyone listening right now where you're like, man, I, yeah. I'm not attracting those clients that I really want. Yeah, that the number one reason is because you're probably not offering something of high enough value to attract those people. Mm-hmm. You know, when you think about it, if you're offering to do a tax return or if you're offering to do payroll or you're offering to do bookkeeping, you join hundreds of thousands of others all offering the same thing. So the first step in changing that around is to really identify what it is that you can offer. And I said, what can you offer if you don't currently offer it to attract a high value client? And so with my background, what I've found works very well is advanced tax reduction. 
you know, let's say I have a client, it's not even that much money, really. They uh, make 500000 a year or a million dollars a year. If I can come in and save one, two, or $300,000 for them every year off of their tax bill using proven, uh, tested, uh, and approved, uh, court-tested, IRS-approved techniques, they're pretty happy with that, and they definitely want to work with me. Okay. That's step number one. Yeah, offering so number something different. Yeah, offering something high value. If you want, you want high net worth clients, you have to offer high value. So you got to identify what that is first. And Dominique, what does the definition of value mean to you? Yeah, value really is about um, you know, what somebody is getting. It's the results. What results am I helping to create? Um, you know, I got a really common request last week that I know a lot of you have gotten before, and that is the old CPA letter. American Express was going to cut my client's spending limit, and he can't afford to do that. He relies on his American Express, and so American Express said, get a letter from your CPA that says how much you make. Well, I could certainly follow an hourly billing model where I just bill for a half hour of my time to prepare the letter. But in looking at, wait a minute, what is this actually going to allow this person to do? I can charge $1,500 for that letter. It still only took me a half an hour to complete, but the value to this client is so important that it allows me to be able to charge much more. And the importance being that without that letter, he won't be able to spend his monthly spend and needing of that cash flow reserves anymore. So is that $1,500 worth it to him to have you write this letter being your as his tax advisor and getting him the funds needed from American Express? Right. Now, some of you may be gasping. Oh, my gosh. No one would ever pay $1,500 for a CPA letter. Well, let me just tell you, I'm living proof they do and they will. Um, and, and here's why. Because it's about the whole package. It's what do they get for it all. I don't just give them a CPA letter. You know, I'm saving the person over a million dollars a year in tax. So he happily pays when he needs something. Right. Okay. Step yeah. number two. So the second thing that we do as accountants that repels uh, high net worth uh, clients is we don't have a market identified about who we're going after. Uh, most of us have start, probably started our careers out just taking anybody that would walk in the door because we're trying to get money in to pay our bills. So if they had a heartbeat and are breathing, we will accept them as clients, Right. Um, if you really want to attract high net worth clients, though, you have to be able to reach them. And part of reaching them is being able to know who they are so that you can recognize them when you see them. Right. Yeah. And so it's about identifying. And what I would suggest. Uh, so the, the, sol the step to solve this, obviously, is identify a market that is affluent. Right. right. So uh, what I would suggest is. I outline, first of all, what are the minimum fees in your practice that are going to lead to the practice that you want? And then think about, okay, what level of value do I need to provide and what types of people can I provide that level to? Give you an example. My minimum fees are $25,000, Michelle. And so I have to think, okay, how do I deliver $25,000 worth of value? Well, I don't know. If I save someone $150,000 a year, is that worth 25000 A lot of people think so. Well, who can I save 125000 a year? Uh, well, somebody, first of all, who's paying at least 125000 a year in tax. And, right. and it goes on and on. So you can kind of reverse engineer and then think about, okay, if I'm looking in the $500,000 income range, who makes that type of money? Oh, these people. And then you can kind of really narrow down in process of elimination, identify a market that's going to be ideal for you. Got it. So who is your ideal market, Dominique? Oh, my ideal market right now, I love working with Internet-based business owners. Uh, number one, they really understand the value of technology. They really understand brief is more. <laughs> uh, do you want to explain that to all the accountants listening? What do you mean by brief? 
Well, less is more, meaning uh, I don't need to explain every little thing that I'm doing. They trust me. And they understand having a face-to-face meeting on Skype. So I don't have to travel anywhere or have somebody travel and come and sit in my office and take up, you know, whoever knows how much time, right? Uh, so it's very, very easy. Email, video, very easy to communicate. And they appreciate that as well. They don't want to spend time in this office either. No, they don't. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so Dominique's love is inter- internet-based businesses that understand less is more, and that will meet with her on Skype so or Zoom so she doesn't have to leave her office or yes. house. All right, what's the third <laughs> thing that's repelling accountants from those clients that they're really looking to attract? The third thing is about looking at how do these types of people make buying decisions, Not understanding how they make purchase decisions repels high net worth clients from us. And that's because we tend to follow models that we see popular in the industry. Well, what do we see a lot of in the industry? We see a lot of um, ad campaigns, discounts, coupons, things like that. Now, think about it. If I'm going to sell an engagement for $25,000, do you think a coupon that offers $20 off is going to attract my market? Probably not. No. And so you may be doing things with your marketing that's actually repelling people because you don't understand how they make buying decisions. People who are making decisions of this nature take longer to make their decisions. They need to really put trust in the individual because they consider today's transaction to be one of many. More than price. Price is not really important to these folks, but having an advisor that they can trust and rely on for a long period of time is the most important thing. So if I'm coming in and sitting down with somebody and talking about what a great bargain and deal this is for them, or if I use words like our normal price is, but for you today, it's going to be this, you can actually turn off your ideal customer. So the third suggestion in how to improve is understand how they make their buying decisions so that you can act appropriately. So using your internet-based businesses as the example that we're rolling mm-hmm. with, like mm-hmm. what are what are the buying decisions that you've noticed from your ideal client that you're currently working with, right? Based yeah, on what you just shared, so they can visualize and you know have a have a story to go along with the point. Yeah. So um, number one, you know, trust is the most important factor in what we do, and so every th- way that you show up. Um, on the internet, in person, on camera, what does your office look like uh, behind you on camera? Um, All of that matters and it needs to be congruent and consistent. So in other words, if I'm also just trying to bring in anybody that will walk through the door and I have a coupon on my website but I'm not showing it to the high net worth people that I don't want to know about that, they're going to find it because they're going to do a little bit of research on you, especially people that are in the tech industry. So you want to make sure that your what you're saying about yourself matches everywhere because trust is so important. Yep. And I focus on what results I'm creating for them. Um, for people that are really busy, and that's what I've noticed about one trend with this target market of mine, very, very busy. They're very lifestyle motivated. They don't want to have to be tied down with record keeping and storing things and coming in to sign things. They want to be free to travel the globe. And so if I can develop processes and systems in my business that go along with that, say an app on their iPhone that tells them where they're at currently all times, 24-7, that is attractive to them. I understand what they're looking for when they make their decision. Yeah, no, definitely. And so let's transition into now what everyone is really wanting to probably hear. Are what have you found are those best ways to now attract, right, and get those yes. higher net worth clients coming to you? And, yes. And it's almost like having a magnet, and they just keep 
you know, gravitating towards you, which I think you've definitely experienced right. now. Right. So I would say just to kind of recap the three suggestions I have. Number one is, first of all, identify what value it is that you bring to the table. Right. The second thing is identify the ideal market to go after. The third thing is to understand how they make buying decisions. And the fourth su suggestion I have Ooh, is extra. <laughs> know where to find them. Know where to find them. So a great example I have for you is to look for people that also target your same market. That may be a financial advisor. That may be a banker. That may be a service provider that consults with online coaches or that develops technology for people in the online marketing space. It might be... Um, people who sell medical equipment to doctors, for example. It may be um, cost remediation specialists for dentists. You want to identify who those other people are and then tag team it. You know, meet with them. Find people that are going to click with you and then see how you can co-market together to have them doing some of the heavy lifting. Because I'll tell you, I'm not the best at sales. So when I can turn that over to a real pro that's also going to win from when we get a client together, that's been the most impactful way for me to attract high net worth clients. Awesome. So how have you met, so we can give some real life examples, of yeah. your internet-based internet clients? Yeah, it starts with going where they hang out. So there's several high profile conferences every year. They're live and in person and being able to set up. And I know you're a big fan of this, Michelle, <laughs> but being able to tag the person on social media suggest, hey, I'm going to be there, too. Can we grab a coffee? I'd love to meet you in person. Can I just grab and shake your hand? Can we coordinate a time to meet in a place? Because sometimes these events are so big, it's crazy. Um, the nice thing about identifying a market, and you don't have to have just one, but for example, so I have multiple targets that I, I work with a lot of chiropractors and a lot of doctors. Once you are in and accepted in that community, the referrals are crazy because you become a specialist in dealing with issues that, that they are dealing with on a daily basis. You understand what they go through. And that's very, very important and also something that they're looking for when they're looking to work with someone that they trust. Yeah, for sure. So now that you've, so I get a lot of questions, you know, Michelle, how do you, you know, how do you find these higher net worth clients? And, you know, do I have to send mailers out? Do I need to do social media? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you, what is your take on that as far as, again, focusing on we don't need many, and I think that's right. the other thing that you know we haven't even spoke about a lot is that you don't need many of these clients to have a really right. amazing life, successful practice. But right. you know, what are what's your opinion on you know social media? And you know, I talk to a lot of these people, and they're like, I need to do my social media first, or I need to get out a, a thing of mailers, and I'm like, mm, that right. you actually don't. But right. let, let's hear it from you, the expert. Yeah, again, that goes back to understand how your market makes their buying decisions. Right. If you picture it, is somebody going to select somebody to pay $25,000 to that they've never met that they just got a letter in the mail about? Most likely not, right? Um, in fact, the higher net worth you go, the more relationship driven they are. They want to get a referral from someone they know or they want to get to know you as well. And so you have to then use mediums that are acceptable to them. So don't waste your money on that stuff if your market is not going to respond to that. Now, if you're looking for people that um, are transactional. You know, they, they want the best deal that they can. They want to get in. They want to get out. Gosh, you know, those folks respond very well to the coupon, to the discount, to a mailer, right? Um, if your market is not on social media, why bother doing social media, right? right. So let's say that you have a primarily older market, although I guess a lot of older people now, the demographic is for Facebook anyway, it's getting much older. Yeah. But if they're not using social media, then don't like waste resources on that, right? right. 
understand where they are. Maybe perhaps there are, I'll tell you one thing, you know, in the techie space, there are message forums. There are message forums that are not taking place on social media, but are found elsewhere online that are groups. And you can join those groups and start to build that relationship. And I think that's a really key point because, as you know, I do talk and work with a lot of accountants and I hear it all the time. Michelle, I'm not an extrovert like you are. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm very introverted. And I think what Mm -hmm. you're saying for each of you listening, that's an introvert, which might might be a lot of you. um, (laughs) You know, the message board idea that Dominique is sharing is one of the best ways because you don't even need to go out and meet them. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll say I'm totally an introvert. Totally. Now, what I do for a living requires me to be extroverted at times, which means I have to take good care of myself because I find it very draining. So I'll go take a long nap after this interview today, Michelle. (laughs) But, um, you know, that's where I think others can come in handy by partnering with others. So if that's just not your thing, but you understand that that's how your market makes their decisions, maybe they're high networkers. Let's say you're targeting people in the real estate industry. You know, realtors tend to be very extroverted. They go to tons of networking events. That's where you can meet them very easily. So tag team with somebody else who is extroverted that really gets energy from doing those types of events and partner on that so that you can benefit without having to um, go against the grain so much. (laughs) And then have to take a nap like Dominique's going to after this. <laughs> <laughs> after this. So, you know, I know we talked about referrals. Um, that's a really big one. You know, what is your, with these higher net worth clients, right? There's a lot of accountants that I have personally spoke with. And, and I get this question a lot. Michelle, you know, should I charge for that consultation? Or should I, should I give it away for free? Um, You know, what, what is your, what is your opinion on that? You know, really from, from coming from the place that the larger the value, the greater the relationship must be with that new prospect sitting in front of you. Right. So you mean, what's my opinion on the F word? (laughs) The F word. Yes. I had, I had to bring up the F word. If I, if we have Dominique Molina here today as a special guest. (laughs) We better talk about the accounting F word. (laughs) I don't like giving anything away for free. And I'm sure everybody listening doesn't like to give it away for free either. But we do it all the time, right? We do it. And one of the primary reasons that accountants give things away for free is because we think that the buyer is looking to see if we know what we're talking about. And so as a way of demonstrating that we know what we're talking about, we will just blurt out all kinds of information. And let me tell you, it is no different than owning a 7-Eleven and having somebody come in, get their favorite drinks and snacks, and walk right out the door. And you saying, and with my blessing, (laughs) right? Um, That's giving away your intellectual inventory. And so what I will say is, guess what? You don't need to give away information for free to demonstrate that you know what you're talking about. You can do that with very good questions. And when you know the right questions to ask, Michelle, you and I refer to this as the doctor frame, right? Right. If you think about it, you don't walk into the doctor's office and the doctor just starts prescribing and scheduling surgeries for you and other types of procedures. They take time with you, they listen to you, and they ask all kinds of interesting questions. You know, does it hurt when you do this? Does it hurt when you do that? Hey, does it also happen to hurt over here? And normally as a patient, I go, how did you know that? (laughs) That's crazy, right? Right. What that does is it builds trust and confidence in the doctor's abilities. And when we can do that, you know, I was meeting with somebody yesterday who's a certified tax planner, and her question was, she got a client that called in and said, I'm going to start a new limited partnership, and it's going to be a holding company. We're also going to have an S-corp that's going to buy and sell real estate and also make other investments. Can you set this up for me? And she was saying, how do I respond? 
Because the, the answer is you could just give it away. And if you're like me, I'm, I'm busy. So I like to get people off my to-do list. And it's yes. far too easy to go, great, we'll take care of that for you. No problem. Yep. <laughs> Connect us with your attorney. Instead, to recognize that as an opportunity to say, gosh, you know, the way you really establish this can make a big difference in how much tax you pay. I'd like to understand better what your goals are with this setup. Why is it that you're thinking about unlimited partnership? Are you really connected to the S-Corp? Why is it that you have that in mind? How much capital are you going to put into the business? Are you going to have partners? How much do you expect to make? And by asking those types of questions, what we're doing is we're building trust and confidence and we're gathering information that we need so that we can give you them an estimate on the value we can create for them. And when we do that, we can quote higher fees because we actually create more understanding of the high value we're offering a high net worth client. Right. And and nothing, the F word wasn't used. No. <laughs> now, you can do... You can do a complimentary, what I do is a complimentary discovery session, but it's basically for me to ask questions and listen to their answers. That's it. If they have questions for me during that time, I say that's a great question and we'll be sure to cover that during your strategy session. And of course, I'm selling them a strategy session. Correct. <laughs> Which is the best part. So, no, thank you so much for sharing all of the tips as far as what's repelling you from, you know, for everyone listening, uh, from attracting those higher value net worth clients. And then, you know, what are the things that you need to change in order to start attracting them? And Dominique, before I let you go, is there anything else that you would like to share as a bonus tip or, you know, what, any last words of advice so all everyone listening can start attracting those clients they really, truly do want to work with? Yeah, and this question is don't do it alone. Don't be a lone wolf. You know, it's great to be a solopreneur and have your own thing going, but I have to tell you it's very lonely even for an introvert. So to the extent that you can collaborate, whether it's in a Facebook group of like-minded individuals or whether it's a local group of other business owners, collaborating with others really helps get you out of your head and it gives you a different perspective on things that we take for granted. You know, to have someone like you, Michelle, you're a lay person in an accountant's world, but to get that feedback from you to say, no, that's actually really important what you just said, because I didn't know that as a business owner. I didn't know I have to do A, B, and C. Wait, let's talk about that more. We tend to take things for granted. So don't do it alone. You can hide behind your computer screen and chat online in a, in a message board or in a Facebook group, something like that, LinkedIn. I've got a LinkedIn group if you're interested in collaborating with people in the tax industry. It's called U.S. Tax Planning Professionals. And uh, you'll get a lot of inspiration, motivation, and insights that will help you connect with more high net worth Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dominique, for being here with us today on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. It was an honor to have you. Thank you. It was a great pleasure being here.